flash flood emergency for Greenbrier County. We don't see these often, and it supersedes all previous flash flood warnings in effect for the county. It is an absolutely terrifying situation. I've been here through some high water events, some floods. This was something just completely different. By the time we get up to the end of the street, the water's up to my waist. I finally got where I could wiggle the ground and got where I could see, and Kevin's hanging out the attic of that house, screaming and hollering. <laughs> He's hollering, Dad, please come and get us. <laughs> so far above and beyond anything that anyone can remember in history. Our number one concern was that we were going to lose the folks who lost their homes. This community could not sustain itself with a loss of 400 families. So that was what motivated us to act quickly. Tom Crabtree and I went to City Hall and Tom made a presentation about a piece of property that was on high ground and asked them to sell it to us for a dollar. And they refused the dollar. We had families in their homes before Thanksgiving for a disaster that happened in the middle of June. This community lifted itself up and gave those families hope, a reason to stay. So let me back up. I've invested my life here. This town has been suffering 30, 40 years before the flood. Before the flood, people were living good lives, but the trajectory of the community was declining ever so slightly. We realized without an improvement in the economic opportunities in this community, it'll still be a community in decline. The next logical step after getting people back in homes is to give them jobs. That's where the story began with the barrel company. A good friend of mine had started a distillery in Lewisburg. We were at a Christmas party, and he says, our biggest problem is we can't get barrels. The next day, we got together with a couple of other folks that were knowledgeable in the industry, and we were like, you know, what do you think of this idea? And well, you know, it depends on whether there's white oak. It's got to be new white oak for every barrel. Turns out we're in the middle of the greatest reserves of white oak on the planet. You know, Appalachia. Appalachian white oak is magic. It's beautiful. It smells, it tastes good. It's a crazy thing. They harvest the white oak a mile from our distillery. And then they ship it back here and sell it to us for $200. We would be entering the market at a perfect moment. We thought it would be easy, but it's not. In a rural community like this, that is economically underserved, it's very difficult to start up a new business and attract somebody to help you do it with the financing you need. We were able to get a couple of grants. We were able to raise a certain amount of money. We were at our limit there. And we were able to attract a loan from one bank, but it wasn't enough. We were into the process, we were committed, and lo and behold, we still need quite a bit of money to complete this astonishing $39 million investment in this community. We started looking around, where can we go? How can we do it? Where can we find somebody that will take a chance, that will support the effort of the last year and a half to rebuild a community? We couldn't find anybody. 
The first positive response was from Rural Development Partners. I spoke with Jonathan Claussen on the phone. They were excited. What they brought to the table made this happen. This town would have died after the flood. Had the development of things not happened exactly the way they did in this program not come along, we wouldn't be talking. I don't know how we would have gotten across the finish line without this program, without these great people that brought it to us, that engaged in this community and learned about this community and said, that's where we want to go. They've helped themselves. They deserve this last piece to get them over the finish line. It was perfect. Through that process, they adopted this town. So here we are, we've closed on that new market tax credit financing, and we're under construction. The town is excited beyond words. This facility has helped Lynch Construction out tremendously because it's creating work for our guys to do. It's putting food on their table. It's putting a paycheck in their pocket every week. Look around you, there's nothing but trees. And that's where we gotta make a living. West Virginia Barrel Company increased my revenue to a little over $12 million a year. Where before we were doing around four. By the time we complete our projects, we'll be over $25 million a year. I have two children. I want the traits of country lifestyle for them to grow up in. And the shake of the community where I'm from, they don't go outside. You can teach a way of life. I hope with people of myself, people with the Barrel Company, we can grow it into a nice county to work, live, and be proud of. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot for this area. Now we have people wanting to move here because of the Barrel Company. Move here from other states. In West Virginia, that's unheard of. In White Sulphur, it's even more than unheard of. I came back here because I wanted to come back here and raise my son. Just love my state. Anytime I'd come home from being in the military for a vacation, I'd be beeping that horn coming through that West Virginia sign, and I'd home. I'd be home. I'm looking forward to the barrel company coming in. I truly am. We need more opportunities. People need to be able to live and not just survive. Rural Development Partners is the key to that second step, to that renewal of an upward trajectory for this community. This town needs a swimming pool for the kids. I have a six-year-old grandson that lives with me, so he'll be happy. The renovation of the community pool is made possible by their generous gift to this community outside of their decision to finance the barrel. What more can you ask? Lyndon, do you want to say something real quick about how excited you are about the pool? No. <laughs> no, no. Ari, Ari does. Hold on. I want to swim in it. <laughs> Next is a very special guest to us, Jonathan Clausen, the Chief Executive Officer of Rural Development Partners from Mason City, Iowa. Jonathan, please. I wanted to take the opportunity to share with you a little bit about what I've learned from you all about stewardship. You are all stewards of powerful gifts. You are blessed with a beautiful land, rich in natural resources. You are blessed with homes, more now, businesses, public areas, government and nonprofit institutions. You are stewards of your bodies, minds, hearts, and spirits. You are all witness to what is possible when caring people bring all these resources together for a purpose. You are now stewards of hope. You hold hope in your hands, and not only for this community and for its future, but for the hundreds of rural communities throughout the nation. Thank you for all the love you have given to me and to Rural Development Partners, and God bless you all. You just keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and you just don't think thank you says enough. 
So, thank you. Ha, 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 ha.